Welcome back. We're still looking at the elections in 2019. That's this year, right? Next few weeks. But there's something else that we're looking at. Now, the farmers have their manifesto for the politicians. So small-scale farmers in Nigeria make up the greater number of the country's workforce population and produce over 80% of the food consumed in the country. The Nigerian agricultural sector is second largest contributor. That's about 24% of the nation's gross domestic product. Nonetheless, the farmers appear to be the poorest constituency. Why is that so? Well, the small-scale farmers have not been adequately supported over the years by successive administrations in the country. That's what they're saying. Their voices are scarcely heard. Neither are they adequately represented in policy-making process and in government. Their constituency has also been excluded and disempowered, while their concerns and interests are not taken into account or addressed. These are some of the agitations, but they say for this election, that has to change. <laughs> well, we have some farmers here representing them. We have Chinasa Ashonye, coordinator of Ogbunge Women Farmers. Thank you. Morning. Ogbunge means big, right? Big. Ogbunge yes. Women Farmers. <laughs> And, and she's a farmer. Yeah. Okay, also here is Ayabami Oladipo, Agri Program Officer, Human and Environmental Development Agenda, Heda Resource Center. Thank, Thank you for doing you. it. Thank you. Good morning. Um, you know, before we came live, we were asking the questions. The two of you don't look like farmers. This is the new face of farming. So um, what we try to do at Heda Resource Center is to encourage the youth to um, participate in agriculture because I mean farming is not about the O's and cutlasses and all that. No, so you could have been staring at your hands. Mm -hmm. I'm telling my friends. <laughs> <laughs> they <laughs> look like the hands of farmers. So we're going. I mean, Nigeria is we're becoming technologically advanced, and so um, it's not just about suffering on the farm. No, so you could be. Funky, you could be cool and you could still be a I farmer. Still go there and use your yeah, okay. Yes, yeah, so you so could still use your hand. These two ladies are FF, mm -hmm. uh, funky farmers. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, Chinasa, yes. what is this that you, you, I mean, the farmers are asking for? Do you have a manifesto for the politicians? A rather long Tell long us about job. that. Yeah. Um, the farmers have come together and have put up a manifesto for the candidates that are coming in. Because we've been voting, we've been canceled our vote, and uh, nothing has been happening. And uh, we said it is high time we speak out. Because there are so many policies that have been implemented, and um, it does not even get to the farmers. So we said, OK, let all the farmers, let all the associations come together to provide this farmers manifesto to, to the candidates so that they will know what we actually need as farmers. And this manifesto cut across all the farmers in Nigeria. Especially in Lagos State that we have actually presented it to the House of Assembly. We have gone rally, we have even, we have even had um, mm -hmm. the farmers mm -hmm. forum with the gubernatorial candidate that was last Saturday and we presented this manifesto to them. To all the candidates yes, in Lagos. Yes, exactly. Okay. And um, now we are here now on air to also tell them that this manifesto has been presented to them. We need, they need to invest in agriculture. We need, they need to invest in agriculture. They need to partner with the small-scale farmers. They have to partner and also make sure that they also invest in um, security, in um, safety, also help us so that we can be able to get health and medical insurance that we cover the whole farms. There are so many things happening in our farms that we have to deal with. But the thing is that this implementation policies does not get to us. We have to make sure that the farmers are included in decision making and implementation policies so that when these policies are being implemented, we know that yes, it's getting to the right farmers. But you see, you notice that this uh, Malabo um, um, declaration of 10%, 10 budget should be set aside for agri. We're not seeing anything. Less than 1% is being set aside. And we are all glamouring that. Thing. What is going? What is happening? Our farmers are suffering. But are, are you saying that? I mean, so far, in the last administration, we had a minister of agriculture that kept talking about things for the farming, talking about improvements yes. 
telephones and all that, mm. access to funding and all that for the farmers. This administration came in and it looks as if they continued. Are you saying that all of this did not get yeah, to the farmers? Yeah, there are, there are recommendations. There are things that they've been doing to farmers, like the, um, the GES program that is Growth Enhancement Support Scheme that the past administration was doing, providing inputs to the farmers. But for the past four years, we've not seen anything to the farmers. We are just looking at Lagos State Empowerment Trust Fund now that have actually helped the youth. That is in Lagos. They actually, they've actually helped the youth providing employment and giving out credit facilities to the youth and also to the women and all small scale farmers. Then we also look at the, um, the, um, the, uh, the school feeding, the school feeding program now that is going on. But you know, Lagos State have not benefited in it. In all states, I think they've started the, they started feeding, feeding the school. And they're saying that is the food they are cooking, it's what the farmers are growing. Yes, and exactly, you understand. But if we can also bring it down to Lagos, because what we are, what, what we are trying to do is that if we can also bring it down to Lagos and um, help Lagos, you understand, to also help the farmers and also improve their okay. productivity. Okay, um, Ayabami, the demand, this manifesto that the farmers have put together, is it just for Lagos or is it national? Yeah, there's a national, um, there's a national manifesto. But what we did at EDA was to make sure, because we're talking to the gubernatorial candidates in Lagos, so we cannot just, and Lagos has some peculiar problems. So you have the issue of land. Lagos is, uh, everybody says Lagos is too small and there's rapid urbanization in Lagos, right? And so we brought down the issues to, okay, the things happening in Lagos. So you have the issue of land. You also have the issue of um, the trolling. So the, in, in Equire, we have we work with small scale farmers, and there was a time that was in August or so. The farmers in Equire came to us screaming that the international um, trawlers they are they're, they're taking all the fishes away in in the Equire waters. So they are not going to their their, their livelihoods were threatened. So their, 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 the security was also threatened, and so they came come, calling to us saying. Okay, we need you people to talk to the government to do something about these international trawlers to make sure that our fish and the biodiversity of our fishes to we're losing them. So we need to, you know, bring all these. Um, we need to bring out all these problems to the fore of because a lot of them are unaware of the issues that are beguiling the farmers in Lagos. And so we also talk about the land grabbers. Uh, a lot of lands, if you go to the Ekpe, you could do access, yes. You know, the lands that have been allocated to farming, you find some. In, in Lagos, we call them omonile. So they come, they take the land from the farmers, and they are left without any livelihood. And, and so the farmers' manifesto, we have the national one, but because we're in Lagos right now, so we want to make sure that the issues are peculiar to the, um, to the farmers. We're bringing out the issues that affect the Lagos farmers. So. Okay. No, yes. you, um, she said earlier that um, mm. you presented the manifesto yes. to the gubernatorial, gubernatorial candidates. Yes. Um, what was their reaction when they received the manifesto? Okay, so we had um, the major parties and some other um, the other um, parties, we had about eight parties represented at the gubernatorial level mm -hmm. during the manifesto program. And uh, all of them, they endorsed the manifesto. In fact, um, I would have loved you to pull up the, the photos. Anyway, that's what we'll be doing going forward. You have said, I, I endorse this manifesto. I agree with all the clauses in this manifesto. So you are now waiting patiently for uh, them to, to action imagine. it. Yes, exactly. And so action. that's what the manifesto is all about. We want to have something to hold on to that. 